Hey, Kent Whitaker. Helen Vincent, welcome to Port Columbus. Oh, Helen, this is this is amazing. When I drove up, I saw the big ship outside, and it's and the two buildings, but the buildings look small, but it's monstrous in here. It really is deceiving. The building was built to represent an old mill, the way the mills were in Columbus back during the time of the Civil War, and really up into the 1990s. So it's very deceiving, but we do have a 220-foot ship in one building and wow. two full size, uh, two full replicas in the other. So you got a few minutes to show me around? Absolutely. Let's go take a walk. Now, ladies first. Right, thank you. We are the National Civil War Naval Museum. We're the only museum in the country strictly dedicated to the technologies of the Confederate and the Union during the time of the Civil War. We actually have remnants and remains of two Civil War ironclads inside. We have a full-scale mock-up of the Water Witch outside, which you see from the road. And inside we have representations of the Monitor Turret, the USS Hartford, and the CSS Albemarle. Now this is one of the great things about this museum is, Helen was telling me this is actually one of the ironclads. Which one is this? This is the CSS Jackson. This was a Civil War Confederate ironclad that was built here in Columbus. Um, it, would, it actually never saw battle. Um, two weeks after the end of the Civil War, there was uh, Wilson's Raiders came into Columbus and saw this ship and had not gotten word that the war was over, so a battle ensued over this ship. Um, they cut her loose from her mooring lines and they actually lit her on fire and pushed her downstream. So, so what we have here is the what the remains of it, and this top structure shows what it would have looked like as it was going across the water. That's correct. This is the ghost frame right up here. Uh -huh. the, it shows the cannon ports, the smokestack, and the pilot house here. This would actually have all been covered in composite uh, sloping side armor, and what we have left here is the hard knot pine, which was the base of the ship. When was this found? Um, it was actually found in 1961 um, during the low time in the river when the water was very, you know, very, very shallow. They located it and then the Army Corps of Engineers assisted in removing the Jackson and bringing her out of the water. And what you see in front of you is 560,000 pounds of rotting wood left. <laughs> so well, they're not doing any more restoration on it, it is as it is right it now. It is as it is. All we're doing now is just trying to keep her in as good of condition as we can. This is actually absolutely amazing. This is a lot bigger than I think people realize the ironclads were. When you see the pictures of them sitting on the water, they look almost small. Yes. You know, this is actually pretty amazing. Is this the only ship you have like this here? Um, no, we actually have the bow section of the CSS Chattahoochee, which was built at the Saffold Shipyards in Blakely, Georgia, but was brought up to Columbus for repairs. She was located at the same time the Jackson was, slightly further downstream. Um, whenever they tried to remove her, though, unfortunately, she ripped into pieces. Oh. Now the rough deck is where your enlisted sailors would be during the day. They would be here whether they're eating or sleeping and just like you'd see in a modern ship or a, a World War II ship, the USS Alabama, the hammocks were hung from the ceiling and this also became a sleeping quarter. Now for the officers, the wardroom was a step up from the rough deck. This is where the biggest table of the ship was so it would become the dining room table for the officers. It also became a place to put out maps and charts and things like that. This also became the operating room. Being a captain had its good points. The captain's cabin had space for the captain to sleep and also another officer if needed. Of course, a big dining room table and plenty of space to spread out everything that he could possibly need. Now, KP duty didn't change a whole lot during different wars or conflicts. Right here is the USS Monitor. These gentlemen are actually out there on the deck peeling potatoes. Now, this is a full-size mock-up of the deck of the USS Monitor. And the great thing about this is a lot of the ships didn't have a place for them to cook. The, the, there was not really a galley, so to speak. So the cook, the designated cook of the day, or the cook of the ship, or whoever happened to be the best cook at that time, would set up a stove or just work off the heat of the deck and cook their food that way. It took a lot of effort to get these guys fed. This picture of the USS Hunchback is the best um, learning tool that we have in the museum. It has a representation of all different types of life during the Civil War for the Navy. We have representations of enlisted sailors and officers, African-American sailors, uh, powder monkeys, men with literature, just basically daily life. During the Civil War, there was usually um, a mascot on board. Most times they were dogs and cats, but there have been records of alligators and bears also being used as mascots on ships. 
Dam the torpedoes full speed ahead, just like the brochure says. Columbus, Georgia, Port Columbus, the National Civil War Naval Museum, right here in Columbus, Georgia. If you're ever down here, check it out. It's absolutely amazing, and you're going to have a great time. <music>